Это работает, это работает. We start this session with an invited talk, which will be given by Professor Mikhail Reutberg, and uh, say a few words about him. He got his uh, master thesis, uh, master degree in 1974 in mathematics uh, from the Moscow State University. Am I right? Moscow State. Yeah, Moscow State. Yeah, and then a PhD in computer science in 1986. And now he mm, has several positions, very multifaceted activity. Uh, Institute of Mathematical Problems of Biology of the Russian Academy of Sciences. This is in a small, uh, as we call it, them, scientific town, uh, about 100 kilometers from Moscow, Pushino, well known for its in biological institutions. And uh, there, Professor Reutberg is the head of the Laboratory for Applied Mathematics. Um, and another important activity of Professor Reutberg is at Yandex company, where he's professor at the School for Data Analysis, this wonderful mm. In venture of Yan, uh, educational project of Yandex, which they started four years ago and which became one of the most popular master programs in data analysis in Moscow and Russia. And also, Professor Reutberg chairs the Yandex department at High School of Economics at our School of Applied Math and Information Science. Now, oh, please, Professor Reutberg. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, my talk is, will be a review talk on the algorithms of sequence compar uh, comparison and mainly I will to speak about a comparison of biological sequences. Uh, and this is a plan with a presentation and I will start with a brief descriptions of the data and uh, the problems. Uh, in biology, we work with several kinds of data. It may be DNA and of lengths of billion, millions and billions and parts of genome or, and proteins which are much shorter of lengths of thousands. And the problem we solve, uh, we can search for global alignment or for chain of local, line, or local similarities or we may try to find all local similarities. Uh, for example, uh, here uh, in this slide I present two sequences. One is along x-axis and another is along y-axis and uh, segments of different colors. Uh, represents the similar segments, not necessarily exactly coinciding se segments, but similar. So we have five pairs of segments and uh, uh, segments of dark blue, light blue, and uh, something like green uh, go uh, in the row and a magenta segment and orange segment uh, have different positions in two sequences. So, if you, uh, usually in biology, we solve the pro alignment problem, it means we want to make one sequence from another only with deletions, insertions, and substitutions, and don't allow rearrangements. In this case, we can include green-blue segments in one alignment, but we cannot include another two segments in this alignment. 
this is the global line which can obtain from these local similarities. So when we search for local similarities, the main question is, did we find all similarities? And we use seed-based algorithms mainly to solve this problem. And when we uh, construct global alignment of similar fragments, uh, the question is, is the alignment evolutionary true? And this problem is usually solved with seed-based or dynamical problem algorithms. So this brief introduction, let's go to the local similarity search. So typically to search for local alignments, we use so-called seed-based filtering. It means that we uh, first uh, search for small, conserved, and easily detected similar fragments. They call seed similarities, and then we search for the local similarity only uh, in the places which are around seed similarities. Uh, for example, uh, BLAST is uh, the uh, most popular prog uh, prog program uh, searching for local similarities in biological sequences. And in the presentation, I will use it for an example. So BLAST uh, searching for uh, similarities in DNA, first search for, say, six uh, matches in a row and then try to enlarge the similarity. Here you see the similarity which has 16 oh, matches of 20 and has six similarities in a row inside. And usually when we, you, you, <laughs> when we use filtering, we have two problems. One is that some similarities can be undetected. In this slide, you see it's shown in green. And from other hand, some similarities, some seeds, uh, may be just random and, does not, and do not lead us uh, to the significant similarity. So we have two problems. The selectivity problem, that seed may not be a part of an interesting similarity and just waste time. And sensitivity problem, that similarity may not contain a seed, and then the similarity will be lost. To treat these uh, problems mathematically, we have to refine them. First, when we say that seed may not be a part of similarity, we have to refine what is interesting similarity. And we have to introduce some measures to, for selectivity and sensitivity. Uh, for in case of selectivity, it's easy because it's uh, natural measures probability uh, of a random occurrence of a seed. And in case of alphabet of four symbols, it will be four power uh, power uh, minus weight. Weight is the number of uh, matches we want. In case of uh, larger alphabet, uh, the probability will be even less. Uh, in case of sensitivity, the situation is more difficult because uh, the probability for the seed, uh, uh, <coughs> the natural measure is the probability for the seed to detect an interesting similarity, but it isn't, it isn't obvious how to calculate the probability. Uh, uh, to summarize this, we have to specify two things. What is the set of similarities to, uh, we want to detect, and what is the similar probability of each interesting similarity? Uh, <coughs> let me give some more examples showing what is, does it mean the seed detects the similarity. So the seed will be represented with sharps, and the similarity will be represented here with a, a segment of uh, white and red cells. 
white, uh, white cell represent a match and red cells represent a mismatch. And here we see that, uh, to show it. Oh, okay. Uh, here we see that uh, the seed matches the similarity in the position which are shown in blue. Uh, the target similarity usually, when you consider this problem, uh, this, uh, usually we consider the similarities of given lengths and given level of uh, similarity. For example, uh, we have, usually we have two models. One model is uh, for the random alignments, and in this case, probability of match will be about 0 0.25. Let me recall that I will suppose that the length alphabet is four that usually uh, take place in, in biology, but in target alignments, which you want to detect, as the probability of match will be much more than 0 0.25. Uh, I will talk about Bernoulli models when all the positions are independent, but macro models and hidden macro models also used in this area. Uh, so I described uh, the general background well known and used in many applications for years, uh, but what is uh, was a big surprise that in the beginning of uh, new millennium, uh, a Canadian a scientist proposed a new approach uh, which allowed to increase the sensitivity of the search. The idea was to use uh, so-called space seeds uh, the pattern of space seed consists not only with the sharps, uh, but also with jokers, which here shown as minus. It means that uh, don't care. It's called don't care position. Uh, in this example, you see we have also six sharps, so six positions where we want to have a match, but between them. The position of the, uh, where we don't care about is match or mismatch. So in this example, the seed matches uh, the similarity despite uh, the mismatches uh, in two inner positions because they correspond to don't care symbols. Sorry, um, question to the example. The second dash line seems to be sharp. Oh, seems okay. to let, be, let, let, because um, we, ha we have three sharps, then, uh, uh, then two, the, uh, two jokers. Why, why a second joker? Why ah. second? It's GG, yeah. so it should be yeah, yeah. sharp, but, yeah? No, 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 no. This means the, uh, the, uh, the seed uh, is uh, defined independently of the similarity. What I show is that this, uh, where is mouse, uh, that this seed in this position uh, detects this similarity. Definitely, if uh, there will be mismatch, it, uh, this seed will detect it. And if we we'll, uh, add sharp here, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so this uh, seed is not a least general generalization of two sequences, but just some classifier which matches both. Exactly. Mm -hmm. so, Okay, let me consider uh, one more example. So we have, I will show the difference between recognition of the similarity by uh, classical and space seeds. So here we have exact matches and uh, in all positions, a classical seed and space seeds uh, detect the similarity. And then we add one mismatch and uh, red shows mismatches, and all positions where there is red sharp is not good. So, but there are uh, plenty of uh, blue positions. So, uh, both classical seeds and space seeds detect the similarity. I want to stress that seed detects similarity 
if it detects it in at least one position. We don't need seed to uh, be good in all positions. Just only one position in, is, is enough uh, for seed to take a similarity. We, we fix the number of spaces. The two dashes means we have to skip two symbols, right? Uh, just we ignore two symbols. Right, ignore the two symbols. Yeah, we ignore... So we, then if we can go back, because then the question remains unasked, if we go back to the previous slide. Okay. Because there was only one space Wait a with bit. red. Oh, it was with red. Yeah. So the red indicated the mismatch. Exactly. So there were two spaces, but they were matched because spaces always match. Okay, okay, got it. Is it okay? Yep. Okay. So now we have two mismatches. We have more problems, more red, and but still we have two good positions for classical seeds and five good positions for the space seeds, but it's okay for both kinds of seeds. And now just we have drums and three positions, three mismatches, and unfortunately classical seeds have no chance to detect the similarity. But space seeds still can detect it. Uh, I will show try to explain formally what does it mean. Uh, because it's very surprised because uh, pro, uh, the idea is the space seeds are more independent. If you have, uh, in, in average, we have the same number of uh, matches for space seeds and for classical seeds because the probability of match depends only on number of sharps. Uh, but space, uh, but classical seeds tend to have more than one hits in one similarity, and we don't need them. So uh, the main difference is difference is probability of having at least one hit. What is the main key, uh, the key point in recognition? Here, the, uh, this diagram shows the probability uh, of detect of similarity of uh, length 64 uh, for different level of different probability of uh, match. Uh, the green line corresponds to the space seeds with 11 sharps. Uh, the blue line is a classical seed with also 11 sharps, and red line is a classical seed of 10 sharps. Uh, it means that if you have less sharps, it means that uh, the this, this selectivity, you decrease your selectivity and increase the work time. So you see that a space seed of weight 11 outperform not only the classical seed of the same weight, but uh, also outperform the seed of less weight. So it outperforms it both in sensitivity and selectivity. And so this was a very nice result, and uh, with invention of a space seed was a nice result and very surprise, big surprise in the area. Uh, but after that, there was also improvement based on uh, some technical ideas. The first idea is to use multi-seeds in the family of seeds. It means that we search for similarity if at least one of the seed of the family uh, detects the similarity. Uh, for example, uh, consider so-called 18-3 problem. It means they want to detect all similarities of length 18 with three mismatches. Uh, so in this example, we want to have uh, sensitivity 100% and try to find uh, what uh, tries to uh, optimize the selectivity. Mm, 
uh, the, uh, here is you can see two seeds and the family of two seeds uh, solve this problem so the seeds each seed uh, has a weight seven so the probability uh, of random seed is four power uh, negative seven I mean that alphabet is we consider four letter alphabets and for seeds for two seeds it will be uh, around two multiplied by four power minus seven that is better than four power m uh, minus six so two seeds of length of weight seven is better than one seed of length six and we can use also a uh, family of nine seeds of length eight that even be better than two seeds from point uh, f uh, from selectivity point of view than two seeds of length seven and this is a summary of the selectivity which ca we can achieve for the different uh, families of seeds. Uh, what is interesting here, I uh, ask you to compare the uh, first two lines, I mean 40 and about 10, so we have multiple four. So invention of space seeds uh, gave us four time improvement. But uh, rather technical idea to use multiple seeds uh, give us uh, a jump from 10 to 0 0.25 and the ratio is 40. <coughs> it is interesting that so just technical improvement on the top of the nice mathematical idea gives us 10 times more than initial idea. Uh, uh, is the method applicable to sorry? Is this method, seed based method, applicable to sequence reconstruction from reads from small sequences? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The general, the general is a general uh, approach. It can be used for the reads too. Uh, like I say, uh, my thinking is uh, it is most suitable to be uh, suitable for sequence reconstruction from small. Sequences. Yeah, I, 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 I understand. I understand what you say. And, uh, what about this uh, time complexity of the algorithm? Just, uh, I'm sorry. Time complexity. Time complexity, time complexity of what? Of this algorithm. No, this is. Uh, uh, seed seed. Yes. Uh, wait a bit. So, uh, search for the seeds is linear. Uh, for, uh, is uh, is. Uh, to, to find to find all seeds uh, positions, uh, the t uh, t time you need is uh, uh, pro proportional to the length of the sequences or sum of length of sequences plus number of f found seeds. So it depends on the of the weight of seed, and it's linear on the length of sequences. We can. Okay, what the next idea is that uh, match mismatch model may be insufficient because uh, uh, some letters may be more similar than another. Uh, in biology, in DNA, uh, we have two le four letters, A, T, T, G, and C, and uh, substitution uh, between T and C and e, A and G are maybe uh, uh, are more frequent and they called, it's called transitions. So reasonable idea for search of biological similarities is include third letter, just we have Sharper and Joker and we have third letter for uh, transitions. Uh, for example, uh, this add symbol allows ANG, so in this, this uh, seed detects this similarity despite of mismatch 
between A and G. Uh, and the general idea is to introduce so-called uh, subset letters. Uh, the seed letter in this case just is a subset of aligned pairs. Uh, the, in this notation, sharp is contains of four pairs, and this add symbol contains of eight pairs. So it, uh, it, uh, it contains these matches and also a G, G, A, T, C, and C, T, and a joker correspond to all pairs. And uh, sim, uh, uh, position, uh, the, sorry, the condition of matching between seed and similarity is just uh, the pair of aligned symbols and sequences belongs to the set corresponding to the seed letter. And in this case, we have just uh, changed the definition of seed weight because uh, because the probability of match in case of uh, special symbols may be not one over four, but less so in this case weight will in case of the the seed the weight will be eight because uh, na <laughs> it's natural to uh, consider uh, the add symbols as symbol as symbols of weight one half. And another problem is seed of proteins, and in this case, uh, blast uh, use so-called vector seeds is another approach. It means that we have some weight matrix of uh, substitutions of any two pairs. Uh, for example, here for n and c, n and c is one and C and C, N and S, C and C is 12. And the seeds are all uh, triples which they have uh, total weight greater than some threshold. In this case, threshold is 12. And in both cases, we have used multiple seeds. Uh, another uh, idea of seeds, just special kind of seeds uh, that are <coughs> so-called partition seeds mean we uh, allow all pairs between uh, letters from one group. For example, in case of DNA, of the add symbol, it can be described in this way. So we have partition into AG and TC and allow all matches inside the group. What is, what is means AG? Uh, Okay, we have a uh, four-letter alphabet, and the symbol at uh, says that good uh, match, good correspondence is a correspondence inside of the group. So A and G is okay, uh, no, so G and A also, so T and C is okay, but A and T or G and C uh, are not allowed. And here are some examples of reasonable uh, groups for proteins. And the, the reason to use partition seeds is that we have uh, tried to decrease the number of so-called neighbors for each uh, tuple of the, of the initial alphabet. And in case of partition seeds, this parameter is much less than in vector seeds. And here are some examples that show that uh, sensitivity for partition seeds and vector seeds are approximately the same and much better than classical seeds. And this, uh, similar, uh, to summarize what was presented for the, sorry, mm. for the seeds, as uh, classic seeds are not optimal, as it was, uh, and when we uh, use some seed algorithm, we have to specify uh, parameters. So we have specified the target set of similarities because uh, the usage of uh, different seed model uh, should depend 
should depend on the target set of similarities. And there is also several things which was not discussed here, but that are important in the practical problems, and some of them are presented here. And now let's go to the second part of my presentation. Which Can I ask a quick question? Yeah. Would you ever allow a semantics where these jokers could mean match none? Uh, I'm sorry. Jokers maybe. Meaning I'm allowed not to match any letter with this. So then, then the sequence would be of different lengths after that. So, so you can have a... Space in between. So ah. matches, matches with space in between. You insert yes, I see. one. I see. You mean here? You mean uh, do we allow insertion in, in, insertion yeah. in space sequence? Yeah. Uh, in this or deletion for that matter. Uh, in this model, not. I didn't talk about this. But here, all the uh, similarities were uh, uh, so-called ungapped similarities. But you, we also can uh, generalize this uh, into situ. Uh, uh, Sorry. To, to, we can treat uh, similarities with gaps in two ways. One way is used uh, seeds, uh, uh, ungapped seeds, and try to find uh, gap alignment when we enlarge the seeds. I, uh, I said in the beginning that we have two step uh, algorithm. First, we search for seeds, and then we enlarge them and search for uh, similarities which may. Uh, uh, contain gaps. So in this step, we can easily treat gaps. Uh, another idea is uh, to use seeds with gaps inside, but this will lead to the uh, uh, to the uh, better, to the worse times and space condition. Okay. And next part the, will be about uh, alignments, global alignments. In this case, uh, the problem which I interested in, thank you, uh, is, is, is alignment biologically correct? Because usually when we search for alignment, we optimize some weight function and uh, we don't know uh, the relation between the alignment we algorithmically construct and alignment which is so-called true alignment. So what is biologically correct alignment? When we uh, consider alignment problem, we suppose that our sequences uh, were obtained by some mutation process from, uh, from a common ancestor. It does necessarily, uh, it, uh, uh, common ancestor doesn't mean that we have necessarily biological sequences. It may be a common file uh, that was corrupted, or it may be an ancient book that was written in different monasteries, and then we obtain the books with different set of errors, and so on. So, the, but the main idea is that we have some common ancestor. Here it's shown with this, uh, this one. And then it was mutated in two ways, green and red. And then the finally we uh, obtain alignment of green and red sequence where aligned the letters positions which was Mm, obtained from the same position of the ancestor. For here, A and G comes from A here, S and T come from S, and so on. So the true alignment is an alignment where all positions, uh, where the aligned positions uh, go, uh, comes from the same, uh, come from the same position of the initial alignment initial, sorry, sequences, sequence. Uh, the problem is that usually we don't know the evolution process. And in, when we solve the, in the case of application, we, we have to find some approximations of 
through alignment. In case of biology, in case of proteins, uh, we can uh, use the alignments of 3D structures as uh, such approximation. Another idea is to use artificially construct alignment, but in this presentation I will talk about uh, comparison of algorithmic alignments and alignments that uh, obtained from the superp <coughs> uh, superposition of 3D structures. And to estimate quality of alignment, we use two standard measures. One called, uh, is called alignment accuracy, and another is called alignment confidence. You can see its definition on the slide. Mm, so accuracy is the number of identically aligned positions uh, divided by the number of uh, position, aligned positions in the golden standard alignments, called with G here, and confidence is uh, the number of positions identically superimposed and divided by the number of positions in algorithmic alignment. So accuracy shows what part of golden alignment is restored, and confidence uh, shows what part of the algorithmic alignment is reliable. And here is an example uh, uh, of two alignments. The upper one is golden standard, and the lower one is algorithmic alignment obtained by Smith Waterman algorithm, which is known to be most accurate from the uh, algorithms used now in bioinformatics. And there is uh, 42 positions uh, which are identically aligned, and 80, uh, 58 positions, aligned position is golden standard alignment, and 52 positions uh, aligned in algorithmic alignment, so confidence here will be 42 over 52, and accuracy will be 42 over 58. And this is main picture of this part of presentations. Uh, this dot plot, uh, the each dot on the dot plot shows pair of proteins, and on x-axis uh, we show the uh, identity percent, the percent of uh, identical symbols in the alignment, and the, on the y-axis we show the uh, accuracy of the algorithmic alignment of these proteins. So, for example, uh, this point corresponds to the proteins with 40% of identity and the accuracy of uh, alignment will be something below 60%. Uh, what we show from the, on this diagram, we, show, we see that if uh, our proteins have percent of identity more than 50%, that we are okay, and algorithmic alignment is quite uh, similar to the real alignment. Uh, for the proteins with similarity between 20 persons and, say, 40 persons, it's also it's typically we have something like from uh, accuracy, but it may be much lower. And for the case of between 10 or 20 persons, only half of our alignment is reasonable, and below 10 persons is nothing. Uh, but uh, if, uh, in case of, pro uh, of proteins, uh, the similarity of 25 per proteins is uh, sequences of uh, 20 symbol alphabets. So, in average, in random similarity will be about uh, seven persons. So, a similarity of 20 persons is very significant similarity. But in this case. Uh, standard dynamical programming algorithms uh, gives us very poor similarities with golden standard. It, is, it was shown uh, about uh, 90, <coughs> approximately the same time as the result of my and uh, colleagues, and also was very surprised 
uh, for biologists because Smith-Watson algorithm is just common uh, tool which is used uh, in many problems. Uh, I, now I will show the reason why our good mathematical algorithms fail in the real problems. And the idea to explain this, I need, uh, I will use the concept of island. Island is just ungapped part of an alignment. Here, A, C, we have three this part, A, C, and B. Oh. A, C, and B, and this is uh, vertical and horizontal lines shows gaps between the islands. And this histogram shows distributions of scores of islands. Score means the sum of substitution weight of symbols for two types of alignments. Uh, the dark columns correspond to Smith Water alignments and uh, light columns correspond to true alignments. And what we see is that uh, Smith Water uh, alignments, algorithmic alignment, typically does not cont do not contain the uh, islands of score less than 10. Uh, it uh, is quite natural because in the definition of uh, the target function of Smith Waterman, we use gap penalties, which in this case is about 10. But in case of uh, true alignments, there are a lot of such islands. And we see that this distribution of islands gives us no chance to restore such uh, alignments by the algorithm of uh, standard type where we optimize some uh, score function which contains of uh, scores of uh, substitutions and penalties for the gaps. And as, uh, what is, uh, I, uh, this pre uh, previous slide showed that uh, there are a lot of low scoring islands, but they also have a significant, uh, their total length is also significant. Uh, and the, this idea, this slide shows that, uh, that islands uh, are typically may be totally lost or, uh, tot uh, or found as a whole. So the next idea is that we, have, uh, we can believe in the good uh, recognition of islands of significant score and length, but uh, the islands of low scores and or short islands typically are not reliable and we cannot consider as uh, we, we shouldn't consider them when we analyze algorithmic alignment. So the main difference between uh, algorithmic and true alignments of proteins is existence of low score alignments and number of gaps, which uh, the number of gaps in algorithmic alignment is much lower than in standard alignments. Uh, as an, so how we can to improve uh, the algorithmic quality? quality. That, uh, uh, here present two standard ways. One is to use information, more information about physical nature of sequences. In case of proteins, is secondary structure, which can be experimental or predicted. And another idea is create a small set of alternative candidate alignments and Present it to the user and then analyze these alignments with some another methods. Here, uh, this is the picture is a slide from the program which I developed from our lab, which uh, construct a set of 
about 10 candidate alignments uh, and arrange them. So in this situation, uh, the number one alignment is the best one and Smith-Waterman gives, uh, uh, gives worse result. And the conclusion of the alignment of this presentation is uh, that when we use some uh, comparison algorithm, the two things uh, should be addressed. One is what is sensitivity of your local search, and second, what is the accuracy of your global alignment. Thank you very much. Time for questions, please. If not, I, I have a sort of remark and that concerning this general seed proposal, yeah. you call this invention of the authors of 2002. Yeah. But this general idea looks to be very old, and you can find it, for example, in the textbook on machine learning by Tom Mitchell, where he describes version spaces and this uh, jokers. And this uh, dash and add symbol are just two types of jokers that are um, ordered. So you have sort of order of symbols by generality. Dash, the most general, uh, add, uh, is, um, add symbol is less general, and constant symbol is yeah. uh, more specific. So, and then you have this idea of version space, which is consists of all classifiers that match your examples. See, uh, uh, it's, this is. Uh, I, I mean that maybe it's the application is new, but the idea is, seems to be quite old. Uh, may try to answer. I think first I want to thank for my uh, for, uh, <laughs> for possibility to give this talk, and I think this conference I just organized. Uh, to connect the different areas and just no, no, <coughs> no learn more about our, our applications. I, am, uh, uh, I agree that because you know that uh, so with, uh, some area, with area of bioinformatics initially was uh, in, con in close connection with technical application and technical sequence comparison. Uh, but later it became uh, a bit uh, self-interested, so I think. Thank you very much for your, your remark. Please. Uh, C is a type of motif. Yeah, yeah, motif. Yeah. So, what is a typical length of a C? No. Uh, for proteins, first, seed. Uh, formally, it can be treated as a motif, but uh, Sorry, in, 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 in for genes? seed for, for DNA is typically tens, something like this, t ten or twelve. Uh, it depends on the length of sequences. If, if for genome comparison, all genome comparison, uh, uh, it's about uh, ten, twelve, somehow twenty. Uh, for proteins is two or three. For short for short DNA segments is four and five. It depends on the length and the quality you, you want it. More questions? If not, then let's thank the speaker for this inspiring talk. And uh, now we are uh, um, having coffee break, and then we separate into sessions. Uh, the more linguistic and text-oriented will be held at the uh, fourth floor, I think, f uh, 4.08. And uh, image session remains here. Yeah?